Hey guys, and welcome to this video. We've got Euro news coming soon, so we're going to do a full rundown on the Euro dollar. Don't forget, like, share, comment, subscribe, get my free training underneath. So let's get on with it, guys. We've spoke about the Euro dollar a few times within my uh, social channels, everything like that, on trading view particularly. And um, it's because it's at a really interesting stage in the life of the euro dollar. What you've got in just 17 minutes time is core harmonized index of prices for the month on month for October, year on year for October preliminary results. Um, and you've got the GDP uh, for quarter on quarter, quarter three, and you've got the GDP year on year, quarter three. And then you've got harmonized index of consumer prices, month on month and year on year, as I was saying. So core harmonized index of prices, GDP, and harmonized index of consumer prices. So it could tell us a lot, really, about how things are going in the Eurozone. Of course, that's very key to understanding where the uh, the market for the Euro is going to go. I picked the Euro dollar specifically because I know it's probably traded the most and it's one of the most traded currency uh, pairs there are. So you can see what I've got on my chart as a monthly. Since you came off the back uh, of the financial crisis, the euro has fallen, the dollar has gained, okay? And preceding that, you had a big rise in the value of the euro against the dollar. So you're really facing a game of two halves here. You've come all the way up since the data we can see from 1970, and now you've come all the way down since 2008. So you had the financial crisis, the recovery came near about 2012, since then, you've gone down and down and down and down. So currently, the market is downtrending on the monthly, long term, and uptrending on the yearly. Okay, so we may suspect that perhaps it will rebound much greater over time. But we're really focused in the nearer term specifically. That is my long term view. But we are looking today at the nearer term. So, of course, what you had was people rushing to the dollar from 2021, they thought it would keep them safe, they thought it would be a bit of security. And what that does is from 2021, early 2021, um, to uh, late 2022, it drags the value down of the euro against the dollar, because people start to pull out their um, euros and they start to buy dollars. Now, within that comes, as we suspected, a significant retracement. So that took us to about 61.8, on our fib it also took us within some key moving averages of 1400 so we had a key tech short there i called it short many 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 times and hopefully you took it short as well that was a really key zone and it really really did come off so you then had your fall and we said look okay we've had enough we're out then you had um your bounce at the moment okay well done if you caught that long as well and now you're really thinking, OK, well, is the market going to go up or is it going to go down? So there's a couple of things which I would say, first of all. Now, given you've been downtrending for a long time, um, even retracements like this from here have come up similarly, 61.8. All right. And then you get a further move down. And it's a little bit different. OK, this retracement is much greater than this one was. And that one so it's a mixed bag but overall the euro is declining so i would probably suggest to swap to your weekly at this point and on your weekly you did see a slight pop up with immediate rejection via this candle wick onto your earliest of key moving averages and within that was a lot of sideways movement there's real weakness in this in this market at this point because if you look here if that was going to be a significant long zone you would expect that it would have risen significantly or it would have had a much larger green candle at least on week two like you've got here okay and then slightly bigger ones with rejection like that but you haven't had any rejection to the downside and every single push up has immediate rejection pushing you back down okay now if you go to your daily at this point what you can see is that the market is trying to rally back past this um key level here okay this very local uh price action area or price rejection so my bias really is made up from we don't really know whether it's going to go higher or lower because it's very mixed and it's very close support and resistance wise but we are willing to wait for a much better entry okay so i'm just going to refer back to my weekly for this um i wouldn't be shocked really if this does push slightly higher than where you are at the moment and i would really look to refer to key levels 
a price action if you're going to reshort it. For me, I wouldn't reshort it at the moment. I don't think you've got enough weight in that um, price rejection there. Okay. And if you look at this green candle, it's very full bodied. It's pushing straight back into that area. Okay. So I'm referring to this, this price rejection you just had. Um, so really, it's a hands-off approach for me on the euro dollar. I would only reshort it if you can get something up here, because you're going to get far better value for um, for your entry. That comes at 108. It comes much nearer your other key moving averages. Now, having said that, if it does turn out that the market does come down, I really wouldn't be shocked either. Okay, that's why I said it's a very much a mixed bag. So really your level of 102 is much more representative for uh, long entries. I would prefer it down there. I wouldn't be shocked if you get 103 first. Okay, so really my bias is split between entering on a fall or entering on a rise. And the reason why I'm saying that and not trading it right now is because you've got such tight margins. If you look at this price movement, since uh well since 25th of september so you've got over a month it's sideways because there's obviously a very tight market going on therefore if you're buying at the moment you're buying into resistance and if you're selling you have got a bit of room granted to the downside within that channel but really you've got diminished profit margins and significant risk because you've already seen it bounce off that level several times it does mean it is technically a short but you're going to get so much better value higher up, okay? Because once it's risen higher, you've got a bigger fall. At this point, you don't have that. And you're going to be touching on very, very early resist, uh, support. So that's why I would hold off your euro till either way. Now, the point to the upside near a 108 actually coincides with the long-term downtrending market. You've seen since 2008, the euro has fallen significantly. You've had somewhat of a significant retracement within that downtrend. And you would expect that if the downtrend was to continue on the very long term, okay, a 618 FIB retracement to early key MAs would be enough. And if you do therefore pull down, I wouldn't be shocked. And that's why I plan to get long near a 103, because it gives you the chance to trade it to the long side within that downtrend. So we're not saying it won't go up or down. We're just planning for either way. Okay, so you can see what you have had, it was a very extreme market, but if you look at your 12 monthly, that big price rejection tells you that this was preferred for long entries, okay? But if you look at something like this, that doesn't always hold price from getting through it again, getting to it and through it again, like you can see here, because that's exactly what happens. These big red candles just diminish the value of that uh, candle wick that was there and the rejection, okay? So good thing to note on this is that within your 12 monthly chart, you can see it's a prevailing uptrend still, even though it's declined for a while, it's also declined up for a while from 1992 to 2001, just like it's done 2008 to 23. Only in this instance, it's a little bit further of 15 years. And this one, it is only um, nine, okay, nine or 10 years. So it may be the case that you do continue up. At the current point, I wouldn't be shocked if in the near term you do rise higher than this level because, like I said, I don't give it a lot of weight. Okay, I don't think it shows you much. I don't think it's very strong. Um, and I would much, much be less surprised if it does turn out that this really heavy upside candle you can see here becomes the one that um, pushes through. Because every time you have gone slightly higher from this point, 11th of October, then you've got the 23rd of October, just 12 days later, which pushes you a bit higher than this high. And you can see every time there's a big green candle that just smashes through this because it's a weak level of resistance, okay? So what's happening is the market's slowly stumbling up, it's breaking through local resistance, every area of local resistance is weak, um, and it just takes time, it plods along, but you can clearly see all the way up here is your key moving averages of your um, 100 and your 200, which is why it's such a good zone to short, okay? Because 
it, that makes it a very key tech zone. If you're coming back to those key high moving averages, you'd probably rather be short within the downtrend and you can see that on your daily, okay, like this. You haven't had a significant retracement from July and this could be it. Wouldn't be surprised if it is. That's my short bias 108, looking long near a 103 if you break under this low. Okay, like I said, I don't hold too much weight in this or that. So I'm planning ahead. Thanks for watching guys, hope that helps as always. Don't forget to get my free training underneath. And of course, as always, stay tuned for more and trade safe. See you in the next one.